The word submarine makes you think of a few things. A delicious foot-long sandwich, a great movie starring Sean Connery and Alec Baldwin, and of course the underwater battle boat itself. But many of us don't think about our floors but maybe it's time to start. Meet the Dyson Submarine, the latest entry in a series of vacuums tackling a new but now crowded segment. It's a cordless, upright, rechargeable, dual, wet-dry vacuum and mop. Yep, Dyson finally has a vacuum that can both vacuum and mop your floors. But you may not be getting what you think you're getting with this vacuum and mop. What you're actually getting is the Dyson V15 Detect with a special additional wet cleaning head. So in this review, I'll show you the different components and explain how they work together or kind of don't as the case may be. I'll put it through some of the cleaning tests that I normally do and I'll explain why this fancy new wet floor cleaning head may have more limitations than helpful features. I'll wrap things up with the pros and the cons and then I'll make a recommendation about whether or not you should mash the buy now button. What's in the box? Like I said, if you have any familiarity with the Dyson V15 Detect, this is it. You'll get the Dyson V15 Detect vacuum motor handle as well as three main vacuuming heads. There's what's called the digital motor bar cleaner head with detangling combs to keep your rollers hair free. That's kind of the main vacuum attachment. Plus there's also the fluffy optic cleaner head with its useful oblique laser for revealing particles on hard floors. For vacuuming, you also get the hair screw tool, great for furniture and pet bedding, plus there's the combination tool and crevice tool. Now the new submarine cleaner head is the one we're going to focus this review on. I'm not going to go into detail on the vacuuming here since this vacuum is exactly the same as the Dyson V15 Detect, which I have already reviewed, and you can see that full review right here on the channel. In a nutshell, it is an outstanding vacuum and I absolutely recommend it. So let's get to what makes this model unique and that's the wet mopping or the submarine head. Dyson takes an interesting angle on mopping your floors clean by creating a self-contained mopping attachment. While the V15 Submarine vacuum motor handle does trigger the water flow and it drives the single mopping roller underneath, the mopping action all happens inside the submarine head. Let's dig in a bit on what makes this cleaning head unique and how it differs from some other upright vacuum mops in a related but not exactly similar class. I'm thinking like the Tyneco Floor One S7 or the Roborock Dyad Pro. For starters, this is not a complete integrated mopping system like those dedicated wet dry uprights you'll no doubt see, where water gets spread out onto the floor and then suctioned back into the cleaner. With the Dyson Submarine, there is no suction and the water system lives entirely inside the cleaning head. And in fact, the cleaner head is actually sealed off from the rest of the vacuum. Let's pull this apart so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a clean water tank cassette that slides out, allowing you to fill it up. On the head is a fuzzy roller brush that does the scrubbing. But because there's no suction, there's only a small open reservoir where any excess dirty water essentially gets squeegeed off. Dyson says it'll take about a thousand square feet of cleaning before you need to empty it, but in my testing it had just a dribble of water inside after I did about 800 square feet. When you're done, you'll want to be careful how you handle the submarine since the open dirty water reservoir does easily spill, so don't turn it upside down, whatever you do. Because there's no suction, this device is limited to a light wipe and polish of your floors and should not, in my opinion, be used to suction up big spills, and we'll get to why in my cleaning tests, which are coming up. It seems to me the submarine attachment is meant for lighter cleaning duties. In my opinion, things like drips and dribbles around the dishwasher or the sink or cleaning up dirty water or dried boot prints by the front door. It does not, in my opinion, work well for sopping up large liquid messes beyond what the small roller could absorb and squeegee away. Also, because there's no suction on the submarine, you do have to vacuum first, creating a two-step process for your floor cleaning. Now, sure, some of us already vacuum first, and those of us who don't want to bother will opt for something like the Tyneco S7 or the Roborock Dyad Pro. I put the Dyson submarine through a series of mopping tests. I used it as a day-to-day -day floor cleaner, polisher, dust wiper to clean up more dedicated spills. And finally, I did test it on larger liquid spills too. 
As a day-to-day -day floor cleaner, the submarine is actually an okay attachment. It does a good job cleaning and polishing and was able to buff away all those small drops and dribbles in the kitchen and by the doors. There is a bit of pull in the head which helps it glide over floor surfaces, which actually makes it feel slightly less heavy too. In my tests, I was also easily able to clean about 800 square feet on about half a tank of water. I also added a small amount of gentle cleaning solution, which Dyson says is okay. I spilled and let some coffee stains dry, and it was able to scrub them away in a pass or two. Finally, I tested it out on larger spills, a spilled cup of coffee, milk, and juice. While it does sop them up, because there's no suction, as you can see on the first pass or two, it actually succeeds in spreading the spill around quite a bit. While it did roll it up in subsequent passes, I wasn't sure how I felt about this. Then of course you absolutely need to empty the dirty water to avoid liquids rotting and you need to be careful when removing the dirty water cassette since like I said it's essentially an open tray. Just tip it into the sink but even then the odd design doesn't fully empty, you've really got to work at it. You'll also want to rinse it out well too. Cleaning up spills was definitely not my favorite use for this device but it does work depending on their size. One other note is if you've got pets, sometimes you'll find the submarine will leave streaky pet hair clumps on the floor because, of course, there's no way to suction them up. Finally, I also didn't love the mechanics of the trigger. While it is well-placed and easy to toggle on and off, you do have to keep constant pressure on it to keep it running, and that constant pressure combined with the heavy weight of the device does contribute to fatigued arms by the end of a cleaning job. One of the things I didn't like about the submarine is that there is no way to adjust the water flow. There is just one setting and that's it. So if you need more liquid to clean up bigger dried on spills or less water to manage more delicate wood floors, you're out of luck. The vacuum is about average to quiet when it comes to noise level, and the submarine attachment here doesn't actually make any more noise than the vacuum motor. And while it comes with a drip tray to place the submarine head in to keep it from wetting your floors, the tray is fussy and not at all easy to just set the vacuum into. Overall, the new Dyson submarine leaves me with some pretty mixed feelings. I'm happy it exists, but I think you really need to understand what you're getting here. I feel like this is some kind of stopgap that Dyson has brought out to answer the competition from Tyneco and Roborock, and to be honest, I think I would have rather waited for a better option. This attachment is just okay, and I actually don't mind using it, but I was struggling with whether or not I could recommend this device overall because it feels like like something is still missing. Let's go over the pros and cons and tally things up. On the pro side, it cleans okay, and it's actually a nice extra option to have to make your Dyson stick vac even more useful. You can use cleaner with the water to boost cleaning power, and despite its small size, the water tank does a lot of space on a single fill. The cleaner head is quite maneuverable and it pulls itself along to help you. On the con side, with the submarine attachment on, the V15 is quite heavy and with a trigger you need to hold and squeeze, my arm did get fatigued. There is no adjustability in the water level here and larger spills get spread around before they get absorbed and that open dirty water tray seems like kind of an odd choice. The submarine also isn't backwards compatible with other Dyson vacuums, limiting its marketability. Most importantly, this is a unit with zero suction power, at least when it comes to the mopping head, and it is even sealed off from the rest of the vacuum, so you are completely relying on the absorption of the roller, which honestly isn't all that plush. Now, when I count up the points, it's clear there is too much missing here to make this a good buy right now. Now, if the submarine head came free with your vacuum, I would say, sure, take it, but getting rid of an older model and paying more for this one is not a wise choice in my opinion. The regular V15 sells for about $9.99 Canadian while adding the submarine to the kit adds a whopping $300 and I can't in good conscience recommend you spend that much on this tool. I think Dyson should go back to the drawing board and make something that does what Dyson is known for, like a real submarine that is blowing the competition out of the water. For that reason, check out some Dyson products that I love, like the supersonic hairdryer or the heater fan purifier that is great year-round right now.